In our game today, played just yesterday on Title Tuesday, Alareza Feruzja shows us his inner Petrosian. In this game, he really suffocates his opponent, and you can see him really taking away all the counterplay. It's a really amazing performance. His opponent is Mikhail Demidov, and also a Grandmaster. So let's jump right in. Feruzja has white, he plays e4, and his opponent plays knight to f6, the very provocative Al Alekin's defense. He basically is enticing white to advance his entire center forward, and then he wants to attack it. e5 is played by Feruzja, hitting the knight with tempo and gaining space. The knight goes to the central square d5, d4, d6, and here the absolute main line is knight to f3, not expanding the center too much and playing with pieces. Feruzja plays c4, and after knight to b6, we might expect the absolute main line, f4, which is the four pawns attack. This is very sharp, uh, but instead he plays e b6. This is the exchange variation against Alakan's defense, and black can actually take either way. Both moves are perfectly fine, uh, but uh, Grandmaster Demidov takes with the c pawn. The idea is he wants to play g6, bishop g7, and expand in the center with e5, and he wants to play for a win, so he's creating an asymmetrical structure by taking with the c-pawn. Knight c3, g6, bishop e3, bishop g7, and rook to c1. This is known, I believe, as the Voronezh variation. Uh, what white's trying to do in this line is basically clear this entire diagonal so that there is no target for the g7 bishop, and then play d5 and gain space in the center of the board. Castles b3, and now knight to c6. Uh, he could play bishop to f5. This actually scores uh, fairly well for black. Um, e5 immediately is also a pretty good move, probably better than the move played in the game, making sure he gets a stake in the center. Uh, but instead, he plays knight to c6, which prepares the e5 move. The problem is Feruzja can play d5 immediately before e5 is played, and that is what he does, hitting that knight gaining space with tempo. The knight goes to e5, and Ferruja doesn't want to just play this knight to f3 and exchange the other knight off, because he has a space advantage. He wants to keep pieces on the board, not exchange them. So he plays bishop to e2 first. Now, rook to e8 with the idea of playing e6 to open up the position is probably black's best idea. The problem is, if he does that, it creates a weakness on d6. Having said that, in this game, he should go ahead and play it and just accept the weakness and try to work around it. The entire game, he refuses to do this, and it causes him a lot of trouble. Uh, so instead, he plays the knight e to d7, but that allows Ferruja to develop the knight to f3 without exchanges. So he's gotten exactly what he wants. Space, his pieces developed, and no pieces exchanged. Exactly what he wanted out of the opening. Knight to f6. Knight to d4, centralizing the knight, and if the bishop comes to f5, he could take it and damage the pawn structure. Knight b to d7, castles, and a6. Black is angling at some point, perhaps, to play b5. He has two pawn breaks here, b5, and then the e6 break, which we talked about. So Ferruzja wants to stop both of them and keep black completely constricted and immobile. Queen to d2, the other rook can come to d1, maybe trade off dark square bishops if it's convenient for him. The knight goes to c5. He'd like to place the knight to e4 and trade off at least one uh, set of minor pieces. Rook f to e1 and knight to c e knight c to e4. So he he gets his wish. A Grandmaster Demidov does get one set of minors off the board, giving him a little, bo little more room to maneuver. The queen goes to c2, hitting the knight. The knight goes back to f6. And now bishop to f3. Now this looks like a very powerful move. The idea is if black tries to free himself with e6, the bishop at f3 will now rage down that long diagonal. And you can see this Petrosian-esque thinking. He's, with each move, he's keeping black from doing what he wants. Very prophylactic thinking and play. In this position, black should definitely play bishop to g4 to get that bishop off the board and exchange another pair of minor pieces. Uh, but instead, he plays the rook to e8 now, and then h3. Now, that exchange will not be allowed. The g4 square cannot be accessed by black. So, bishop to d7, uh, supporting a potential b5 push. So, how do we deal with the b5 push here? That's right, a4. 
clamping down on the pawn break even further, making sure that any freeing maneuver from black will only damage his position. Rook to c8, placing the rook opposite the queen, so b5 could be played now because of the pin, so the queen steps out of the pin. Queen to c7, and what this does, it defends the b7 pawn, so if he does break with the e pawn and open up that diagonal, the b7 pawn will be defended. Uh, but a5, clamping down further on the queen side and locking in that b6 square. The queen goes to b8 and now b4, and we see this beautiful construction of queen side pawns. Lots of space, and these pawns can advance and really create problems for black. Uh, rook to c7 was played, um, but this was probably black's last chance to play e6. He's definitely worse after e6, but he gets some peace activity, and it, he would have had a fighting chance, I think. Uh, rook to c7, and just c5, advancing the pawn majority. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and we see these strong pawns on c5 and d5 backed up completely by white's forces. Queen goes to d8, now bishop to f4. Hits the rook, forcing it to move. The rook goes to c8, and now c6. That move can be made. The c6 square is defended by white, so pawn takes, pawn takes, and the bishop has to move. Goes to f5, but now c7. This is what we call a monster pawn. <laughs> it's the queen with tempo, for starters. It's defended by the bishop and the rook, and is really a very difficult piece for black to deal with. The queen goes to d7. Now, knight takes f5. Queen takes f5. Now, here's a question for you. What move does Feruzja have in this position to immediately win material? That's right. Bishop to b7. The rook at c8 is locked in and uh, is immobile, and he is going to win an exchange now. h5 is played by black. Bishop takes rook. Rook takes c8. And get this, he won the exchange, and this pawn is still there. So he, he keeps his advantages and wins material without giving up anything else. Uh, rook takes e7. Knight to d5. It's the rook and the pawn uh, and the bishop at f5. But rook to c5. Counter pins. It doesn't win material because of this next move from black. Queen takes bishop. Uh, but then rook takes d5. Not only threatening rook to d8 check, but defending the queen on d2. Queen takes d2. Rook takes d2. And with the unstoppable threat of rook to d8 on the board, Mikhail Demidov resigned to Alareza Perugia, playing a game where he restrains his opponent and takes away all of the counterplay. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.